We're now going to take a look at creating internal or embedded style rules for your page. And an internal or embedded style rule, only a single page has access to. So the page I placed them on, that is the only page that can use those specific styles. This is a great style rule for a marketing page and there's no reason to clog up your regular style sheet with a whole bunch of extra rules if only one page is going to use them. So let's take a look at how to do that. First of all, we're going to create a new page. So Control or Command N to do that. We'll keep it in Design View and our title is going to be About Wanderlust Travel. So I'll add that as my title. Now I'm going to go over and do a Save As and we're going to name this About. Now I could add dash us and maybe I will do that. Let's do about us.html. Notice I'm adding a dash. That's my styling for our website. So anytime there's two words, it's lowercase for both of them with a dash in between. So there's our about us page. Now what I want to do is add some text in here. And within the text folder in the course files for either this lesson or if you downloaded the start files for the entire course, there's a text folder within that. And within that text folder, there's an about us.rtf document. This is the document that we're going to open and we're going to use that text from there and copy it onto this page and then we'll add our formatting. So let's go ahead and open that up. It happens to open in Word on my system. Most of you should have something available in order to open an RTF file, which stands for Rich Text Format. What that's going to do is allow me to use Paste Special to copy this information over. So I'm going to select the text, copy it, move over to my HTML page, and I'm going to do a Paste Special. This allows me to control how much formatting comes in. An RTF file does contain formatting within it. All I want are the paragraphs, lists, tables, etc. I don't want any other styles to come in with that file. I'll click OK and there it is. Now you can see that this didn't officially get the paragraphs pulling in from that RTF and that can happen. So I'll go ahead and organize it. Things aren't always perfect when you pull them in, but that's okay. I'm just hitting enter or return and then hitting my forward delete key. If you're on a Mac, not the one that has the little backwards arrow, but the one that deletes forwards, you'll find yourself using both of those delete keys on the Mac. If it's a PC you're working on, you have an official named backspace key. So that's what I'm using. I'll do the same thing down here. So I've separated them out into nice neat paragraphs. So I want to make my first line a header one. Put your cursor in it and hit control or command and the number one. That makes it a heading one. And everything we're looking at is default. I now want to save my page. I'll close up the folder. I tend to find people new in the program tend to leave things open, have too many files open, and then it starts getting very confusing. Try and keep your Dreamweaver interface very neat initially. Now I should see this about us.html file within this folder. Notice I don't, so I'll do a refresh. Hmm. Where did that end up? It's clearly not where it's supposed to be. So let me do a file, save as, and notice it did not end up in the correct folder. So what I'm going to do is back up a little bit here, go out to my C drive, and I'll go down to my Wanderlust Travel, and make sure it ends up in this folder. So this can happen to you anytime you create a new page and save it. Always double check that it's in that Files panel before you start doing too much with it. 
In classes, I tend to have people lose their files quite often and have issues. If you just get in the habit of always double checking. Now, if you end up getting this message, what this means is if there are hyperlinks or images or other things within your page, Dreamweaver would correct them for you. I'm going to say no because I don't know where this page was and I don't have anything on the page anyway. So I'm just going to say, nope, don't change this page at all. So there is my correct about us. Notice I have two files now with the same name. I will close the first one. Otherwise, you'll find yourself working on that other one accidentally. So there's our file. Now let's open up the CSS styles panel. And what I'm going to do within this styles panel is click the plus sign down at the bottom. Now, in case yours isn't quite so handy, you can always go up to window and there is that panel for you. So we have it open. Let's hit the plus sign here. And what you do at this interface is just start at the top and work your way down. So I want to create a tag selector. It's an H1 tag I'm going to modify. So now I need to choose the tag in this dropdown. And I always recommend, until you're extremely familiar with Dreamweaver, use this dropdown. Tag does not show up by default. Normally it's a class and it's very easy if you just type this in. You end up with a class called H1, not a tag type rule, and all of a sudden it's not working. So I want a tag, I want an H1, and then I'm going to say this document only. I'll click OK, and now it's a matter of building the styles we want. So let me go up here and I'll use, let's see, we want a, let me try Georgia. We'll start out with Georgia. Now in the font sizing, I'm going to use something called an M. And what an M has is 1.0 as the default number. And it may seem to be an odd unit, but that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to do 1.4M. And what an M represents is the width of the letter M for the default size for that font. So this one is going to be quite a bit larger than the default size for a font. We'll take a look at it. Now I also need to choose a color, so I'm just going to click the color chip. I'll go down here and I'll make this a uh, why don't I do a dark orange? Let's see, what can we choose here? I'll do a dark orange for my heading. That's about all I need, and I'll click OK. You can see it instantly applies, and I can see my font over here in the CSS styles. Now what I'm going to do is I want something very similar for my P tag, just smaller. So I'll select that H1, and instead of having to go through that whole process one more time, I'm going to right-click and say Duplicate. I'll choose a tag. The tag I'm going to choose is my P tag for these three paragraphs. So when we're done, all three should change. This document only, and you'll see they did change, and they're rather large. So let's select the P tag. And what I'm going to do is set my P tag to 0.95 M's, a little bit smaller than that 1.0 default size. And 0.85 to 0.95 are pretty common sizes in the M category or M unit for a paragraph. Now it has the same color as my other font, and I don't really want that either. I can just click here and adjust it. And let me make it a little bit more of an orange. Now that's getting pretty hard to read, so I'll just put it back to black. There we are. So we just created two internal styles. Now how do I know these are internal styles? This is the giveaway. Anytime you see the word style with angle brackets in your style panel, that means those are only available for that single page. Now this says Wanderlust Travels, and I wrote about Wanderlust Travel up here, so let's fix that. I'm going to have this say about 
Wanderlust Travel. Now I can always take these style rules and move them out onto an external style sheet. Dreamweaver makes that a pretty easy process. But for now, I'm just going to style this as it is. We can always adjust it later. That's the nice thing about CSS style rules. So we just created two internal or embedded style rules for two HTML tags on our page using the Dreamweaver interface. And we can now view them in the Styles panel.